now appearing in the building, up in every ear hole from 80 year olds to the children. You're here to hear about the heroes and the villains and save yourself some dollars, yen, and euros from the zeros to the millions. This is a lot of class packed into one podcast. They probably ought to have laws passed, but it's too late to stop the onslaught. Raw blast of compacted, bombastic, five-alarm sass. They're talking AVX, way back to secret invasion. They're talking flying up high in the sky, down to the feet on the pavement. They're reading the pages of every single one of the summer events. So other than Venice, you want to be coming to them when you want the Avengers. They're up inside of your environment with flying iron fists. Giant sized Goliaths and the tiniest super scientists. Try denying it, but I insist there's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest. EMP, literally MP3, TNT. Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest EMP, literally MP3, TNT Young, new, mighty, and secretly Try and I in it, but I insist There's other podcasts, but this is Earth's mightiest Welcome to EMBS, where we shoot the breeze for an hour uh, for this episode, episode, what are we, six? Man, yes. six months already. Uh, episode six, we are recording this on the 7th of July, 2020. So as always, uh, the Patreon supporters will get this episode a month early, and everybody else will get it a month later. So if you want to help out and support the show, definitely hit us up on patreon.com slash empcast and support us. you also get other goodies uh, some sketches, uh, if you're in it long enough with the right amount, some custom toys, and even uh, maybe some comics from time to time. So do us a solid, uh, help us out. There will be spoilers uh, for the stuff we are going to talk about. I urge you to check the show notes to see what the episode is about in case there is something that you do not want spoiled for yourself. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the show. Um, my name is Corwin, and with me is Viet. Hello. And Bobby. Yo, 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 yo. So now you know who's saying what, and you could tell us apart. We are just going to jump into the show. How you fellas been? Same old, same old. I hear that. Can't complain. Same old. Yeah. <clears throat> pretty, uh, pretty eventful week this past week for me. Uh, what's it called? The I mean, just normally the end of June is is kind of a big deal because it's like wedding anniversary and birthday <laughs> in the same week. But uh, the the doctor wife, the doctor wife finally finished her residency. Yay! No more school. Yeah. She's official doctor wife now. Uh, or she's she's doctor, been in MD. Wife MD. Yeah. But uh, yeah. She, now she she has to study for the board so she can be a. Uh, legit License. general surgeon, general surgeon. So, awesome. Yeah. And then, so uh, crazy. but then she's gonna do, uh, she's gonna do an ICU fellowship. So we still got another, still got another year before, uh, sh- she's making doctor money. Okay. <clears throat> an ICU fellowship, and you can see me. Hopefully she won't see you <laughs> in the ICU. <laughs> it's fellowship for all of us. Sometimes, um, be it when I'm watching Rick and Morty, I think of you. <laughs> oh yeah, like <laughs> sort of like there's a <laughs> like some 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 mild correlation between the uh, the Beth and Jerry. Um, relationship and and you and and dr wife this relationship <laughs> <laughs> in uh in a very comedic uh yeah so anyways when i remember to watch rick and morty yeah i haven't watched any of the new season i'm way behind it was yeah great. I, how, how many um have you seen corwin I saw the whole thing. It's a short season. I mean, it's like what eight episodes, maybe. Okay, so I because I've only seen I think four. So 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 more came out. They did like 
I think they even did the the short season in two halves. Like yes, yeah. So all right. So I got to see the the last half. Uh, I think the last season I watched was the one with the, uh, uh, with the, you know, like the, was the, ca- the, the, the council, like, yeah. the council of Ricks, I think oh, was the last one I watched. Morty took over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's actually, well, figures we make this into something. I, I, for the first time, I somehow missed like one or two episodes from the first season and it was just playing like on my TV yesterday on Hulu somehow while, while I was doing some stuff, and I realized that the the like in the first season, the Morty with the eye patch shows up. I didn't realize it went that far. Like it honestly kind of like stopped me in my tracks. I was like, these guys are so much smarter than I realized. <laughs> <laughs> it, like like the their uh, the way that. They kind of tie the whole room together, if you will. Is actually pretty fascinating. Um, just when you're like, these guys are the, so freaking funny and hilarious. Just at that point, they always remember to like hit you in the head with, "This is completely serious. Don't laugh." <laughs> one of the one of those episodes where like everyone dies. Yeah, definitely oh. solid stuff. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think because since Viet hasn't watched the whole thing yet, I think the probably the alien parody episode is one of my favorites. Um, the whole oh, did you see that one, Bobby? Before I get too far into it, the, the alien like literally of aliens. Yes, I'm trying to remember. I uh... and well, it's I like a whole, you guys can spoil it. It's fine. There's like a whole civilization that's trying to take over the universe and stuff and they they attach these things to your face that take over your body and basically you become part of their society so yeah rick and um rick and morty end up escaping from them but on their way out they're flying a spaceship and they just start bombing the shit out of the city and attacking them trying to get away and there's there's a scene where they come up on these two towers as they're flying by and they're like, uh, yeah, we're not gonna do that. And they like avoid blowing up the two towers, or the two towers that are standing up in the middle of the city. It's like we're not that bad. And then all of a sudden they pull like a Pearl Harbor, and then Morty's like, Rick. and he's like, what? That's so long ago. I'm telling like, you, like, yeah, like what? Too soon, kind of. Like, <laughs> I I didn't see that one. But the I think the last episode I saw. It's weird because the in that in that um. Is it new season? The fourth it must be the fourth season, right? I believe it is the fourth. Yeah, um, there's a bunch of them that are in space. Like, there's <laughs> the one with the snake snake planet is. Uh, I don't know. It's just classic. <laughs> when when Summer gets the the tape and she's like, "Check it out," <laughs> and she's playing for her friends. Oh, Summer, what is that? It's snake jazz. It's my jam. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh I don't know. The musician in me. <clears throat> of course. I definitely love that show. It's, it's solid, solid stuff. You... Yeah, I mean it's it's good. Like oh, every oh <laughs> the dra um how about the episode with the dragon? Oh lord. <laughs> It's like, it's like you got you got futures like <laughs> futures unreleased unreleased album oh and it's like he signed it in he signed it in uh, oh my god I can't remember the song you know what I'm talking about I don't remember the song but I, I uh, what was it oh he signed it in Molly and Percocet <laughs> Percocet <laughs> and the dragon's voice. It's like it sounds. The dragon sounds like Sean Connery, of course. So it's like I don't know. They just never stop. Yeah, they're pretty, pretty freaking funny. Do they? Don't they have another show? They've got something else coming on. Is it H? No, I, another studio picked them. Picked up a different show of theirs. I can't remember what it was. What is? 
what is Solar Opposites? Have either have either of you guys seen that? No. Solar Opposites. I know it's like a. I'm not sure why it just popped in my head in relation to Rick and Morty, but I, it's something about aliens, comedy, cartoon. Rick and Morty <sighs> only has, or at least on Hulu, there's only three seasons. Yeah, that's true. So the but the newest one is is season four. Okay, yeah, it's not on it's not on Hulu yet. Gotcha. Unforge. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Solar Opposites does, like the animation style does look like. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like it looks like Rick and Morty esque. Or like, yeah, what's the um? It's like something from Adult Swim for sure. A little bit on that on that Rick and Morty tip, like even like maybe that like China Illinois type anime. I, I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. There's so many shows on on Adult Swim with weird animation these days. Yeah. Hard to keep track. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess this is a that's a Hulu original. According to this, it is Solar Solar Opposites. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So Dan Harmon, I believe, is one of the. Guys and Justin Royland. Ah, yes, they do. Those are the two guys that do Rick and Morty. Solar opposites. Exactly what Rick and Morty fans want. <laughs> this is a video. Um, <clears throat> oh, it is. It is Justin Royland's new Hulu show, Solar Opposites. Hmm. I think I may prefer them to just go ahead and concentrate on putting out more Rick and Morty shows. I know. Uh, yeah, honestly. Like, like they, they, to kind of, like, dabble in the same almost genre seems like, uh, it just seems like watering things down. It's like having American Dad and, and Family Guy going at the same time. <laughs> I never got into American Dad. Yeah, because it, that's, Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was cool for the first couple episodes, and then I just kind of lost interest. I mean, even a Family Guy got tired of after a while, too, and I just stopped watching. But, yeah, you know, totally. but I did I the same thing with The Simpsons after many, many years. It's just, I don't know, just yeah. didn't appeal anymore. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, still, I still wanted to make my goal to watch every single episode of The Simpsons. Like, only what 20, 20 something years of it yeah what no way more it's like 30? they have more than 30 yeah they're, they're like almost have 40 seasons i think Man. i know isn't that nuts um the guitar player in my band nbfb no bud for Bisson, which you can find on itunes um <laughs> was like the biggest simpsons fan uh and that was in like 2003. I remember him being like, "Season 25." So. <laughs> uh, All right, it's cool. You you'll tackle that. Let me ask if any of you guys started watching that uh, Warrior Nun show on Netflix. Not yet. That looked interesting. I was like, it, hmm. It does, but I feel like I'm being like. You know, you know what I mean. I feel like I'm being led by the by the nose almost. <laughs> like I, this... I didn't. I, I didn't even realize it's based off of a comic. Um, Makes sense. I'm probably almost halfway through it. Been watching it with the wife. Really? Yeah. It is. I heard it was slow. Yeah, it's a it's a mixture. So they got the things we love. There is some decent humor in it. Um. Huh. You know, it's it's basically this girl who accidentally receives this uh, a, a halo, basically, of an angel. Um, it was kind of passed down to a religious sect of warrior nuns, and she accidentally comes across it and gets it. The thing is, this girl has been quadriplegic most of her life, so now she can actually, you know, walk and and experience a little bit of life. So it does take the usual 
tropes of oh, fish out of water, finding a boy that she likes, some of the usual YA stuff that you kind of expect from the series. Um, they they put you know the usual stuff you can expect. It's in there to kind of bring it down a little bit for me, but I could understand that I may not be the target audience. It's kind of the teen kind of show. They're, they're, they're trying to they're trying to like grab. It's somebody's first like nerdcore experience. Exactly, exactly, yeah, I, I, and I, it I, works. You know, it definitely works for them, which makes it entertaining. I haven't finished it, so hopefully it doesn't fall off the railings. But I don't think it will. It's just there are some times where it's just a little too simple for me. Almost like yeah, how they did a uh, lock and key sometimes, where they kind of did the paint by colors for the general audience, which sometimes works and sometimes can stifle the the real art of it. But sure. um, definitely solid. You won't lose out watching it. Yeah, I totally. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, I always, I always love a, a good, um, like ninja nuns gag. That seems to sure. It right. seems to happen with. Uh, I mean, I think I first saw it like on Archer and Armstrong, like the or like in the in the comics, and I think I, it's they've showed up again. I I think on Metal Shark Bro, I'm pretty sure they had that ninjas. I guess <laughs> ninjas. Yeah. That's- with uh, right. <laughs> with the uh, nunchucks, like just the, oh, the no, puns just, just keep going. No, no, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, and I like I think of like the the Jason Aaron Ghost Rider sequence where there was like the the nuns with machine guns. You're a little bit far away, Bobby. I don't know if you can Ooh, get a little. Sorry, to sorry. Yeah, I was just actually yeah. Um, I, I believe it's Jason the Jason Aaron Ghost Rider run where they've got the the nuns with machine guns it's kind of another another nice little trope anything where nuns get like explicitly violent is always always you know the, the prison <laughs> bullet and past the ammunition kind of thing that's right yeah <laughs> you know I, I went to catholic school for three years nuns can be scary oh yeah I mean I'm sure school, but yeah yeah <laughs> I didn't go to Catholic school, but I was raised by two parents who did. It's just just as scary. <laughs> <laughs> Nuns can be scary, but <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. cool show. I recommend you guys check it out when you get the chance. All right, yeah, no doubt. It definitely was like it, it like totally caught my eye. But like I said, I I almost was like. Is this a trap? You know, it's like, <laughs> like it's it like, uh, it, it's a, this is t- a little too right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, What's going it's, on? it's sort of like a. What's the catch? Yeah, it looks like one of those shows. Is like, am I gonna like this just because the girl's hot? <laughs> yeah, or is like type a, of show. I almost feel like. At what point is the the annoying guy at work who's always trying to talk to me gonna ask me if I like this show? And uh, and at that point, I know I don't need to watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, hey, Corwin approved. We'll give it the old uh, what for? Yeah, so far for sure. It's funny you you mentioned um, lock and key though too because I remember at the time. I mean, uh, that that I I hadn't read most of lock and key so when i watched it straight through i was just like mesmerized the the show i didn't a lot there was like you know there was enough um twist and turn for me like an or rather like uh you know page turn shockers type Mm -hmm. thing so uh so it kept me like really in the game whereas i can totally see for you it would have been like you were past that. You knew where the the story was headed, so you'd be able to kind of like focus on the I don't know the the delivery, I guess, more you know production value, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. My uh, right. my comedian friend, uh, I've been <clears throat> she's she's held on to my volume one and two trades of Lock and Key for the longest time, Ooh. <laughs> and like. Uh, and then, you know, she finally watched the, uh, coincidentally, she finally watched the Netflix show, like, last week. 
And then now she's like on volume five <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the graphic novels. And, That's all and, it took to get her in gear, huh? Yeah, exactly. She's like, she's really into them. Good. So, uh, so, and yeah, and I, the, the, yeah, the comic is way better than the show, even though the show is pretty good. Still good. Yeah. But. I, and, you know, that was another thing that went, uh, I went kind of like back and forth on and then never pulled the trigger was like, whether or not to buy seven trades or like a, a nice omnibus and then they were like going to put out a new one and I remember I don't know Cor I feel like I remember Corwin saying he was waiting for the final like I don't know super mega omnibus collection there's like a new um, there's a new series out from them it's like a two issue mini series mini or something series. like that so yeah it'll be another little mini trade when they put all right different one shot stuff together see yeah. <laughs> these are the things that I gotta like sometimes go back through our podcasts and we're like oh man I gotta remember to <laughs> go get those comics and yeah, write it in the show as as, yep. as it goes yep. Yep, 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 yep. speaking of comics um, my my pick for 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 the episode I I I think I, I decided that I'm gonna like with these shows. I'm gonna try to at least read one indie book. <laughs> yeah, and uh, kind of put a spotlight, and especially, um, especially in our uh, current, um, current, uh, yeah, I guess, world. Uh, po- yeah, world, uh, world climate, climate. Uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, maybe spotlight some, uh, some of our uh, our black fellow black creators. Um, hey. I. Uh, uh, I started reading uh, Tuskegee Airs. Uh, okay. Written by um, by uh, Greg Burnham and Marcus Williams, and uh, you, if you haven't seen Marcus Williams' art, like his his art is amazing. He's an amazing artist. He does like all these really cool like like crossover type you know mashup artwork that like pinup art that's really awesome. And, okay. uh, yeah, this book is, uh, Tuskegee Airs, like H E I R S. Ah. Right? Yeah, and so this, uh, it's a book that takes place in, uh, 2096, where I guess there, there's not really fighter pilots, or th- there's not anyone that pilots planes. Everyone just kind of does it remotely, except for this group of people. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, and then, like, it starts out just kind of, like them just kind of practicing and then it just kind of makes like a big turn into like kind of like uh like mechs fighting monsters and stuff <laughs> it's kind of cool i like it that sounds awesome yeah and uh, and uh you know i guess uh just to a little disclaimer i i i have made pop vinyls <laughs> That like I have made pop vinyls for for it. yeah for this book, for this book and his and Greg's other books, so you know take that with a grain of salt that these people gave me money. <laughs> it's like when NPR says like Netflix has given us money, but we're now going to talk about them. Exactly, pretty much. But it is a good book, in my opinion, uh, and I recommend when it. You, Via, when you said um, that Marcus Williams' art is kind of like pin-up mashup do you mean that it's like uh like i don't uh vintage crossed with sci-fi I, like what did you mean by that? like his exactly? style is is like cartoony but like he does a lot of like pin-up stuff where he'll do like a disney princess like x-men crossover okay type art or like um oh, i've seen those yeah yeah, like if if um, I probably shared it with the group a couple of times. Like his his art is amazing, or he'll just like he made up his own, or like or or like I guess he he sometimes does a lot of like gender bent type things, like girl okay. versions or black versions of like certain characters and things like that. Like, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's really good. His his art is amazing and. Uh, so far, I'm I'm like there's only one trade out of Tuskegee Airs, and it, I'm like halfway through it. And it it's in, definitely interesting. <clears throat> okay, I I definitely um, am familiar with that art. 
Um, that's dope. <laughs> for here's a here's a perfect for instance, a um, a sp- a female spawn. Um, I was about to say uh, female African American spawn, and then I was like, dope. Don't be an idiot, Bob. Obviously, Spawn's black. <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot. <laughs> it's been so long since I read Spawn. I just like almost forgot. And there's my there's my white privilege. Um, <clears throat> what was I just gonna say? Oh, did you guys see that little? Uh, it's like a real short video that this dude put up. Oh, I gotta remember his name. He like posted it on Twitter. I think it started on TikTok, and he's like. It, if you guys could repost this and maybe Disney enough times that Disney will see it, it would be awesome. And it's this, um, his name's, I, I, I think he's, he's either black or he's like African American, Latino, um, you know, biracial. And he does this graphics program where he does a video of himself and it, it's, it's labeled like heroes. I like, and it shows him thinking. And then he turns into like Ben 10 and then he turns back to himself, and then he turns into, I forget what the other one is, and turns back to himself, and he turns into Spider-Man. And so then there's this, like, it it, it it went super viral, and people started being like, Miles Morales, like, this dude for Miles Morales live action. And uh, apparently Disney, like, tweeted him back um, and said they were interested in working with him. He's, like, super stoked about it. So I got to... I just Googled him the other day. Let me see if I can find it again. It's pretty cool. It's worth. It's only like a 10-second video, um, so it's worth checking out. Uh, Spider-Man. How how familiar are you guys with the Tuskegee Airmen? I'm not. I'm uh, not just going to assume Corwin knows because he's black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, so the Tuskegee Airmen were. It's. Uh, I mean, I know it was a a fighter pilot corps, but they were infected with syphilis. Yeah, is that what it is? Jesus yeah. Christ, it's crazy. I was gonna say experimented on with something, but I didn't know. Yeah, but... it, it just immediately starts to sound like a science fiction movie once you say it. It's like <laughs> spider pilots experimented on with what? To like, what was the point of that? Like, yeah. why would? How can that? Ugh. But I mean, you know, with with this um with the the political controversy of like renaming problematic things, uh they yeah. were talking about uh changing the redskins to or someone was proposing changing the redskins to the to the red tails like after the Tuskegee Airmen that like uh. the like their cuz their planes had had uh, like a red like yeah. tail at the at the end of their their jet their planes. Didn't I- didn't they just rename the football team? Huh? No. Didn't they just rename the football team? No, they've been the Redskins, and they've they've they stayed that way. Renamed the yeah. Washington Bullets. Yeah, the Bullets okay. were now are now the Wizards. <laughs> my uh, my dad used to teach at Frontier Regional High School, a couple towns up from from uh, Amherst, um, which just to give me the stark reminder that even though I live in this supposedly hyper-liberal bubble, it turns into uh, John Deere country pretty darn quick. So Frontier Frontier's team was the Redskins until about 1993. <laughs> um, but yeah, they did finally change it. So they are reviewing the Redskins. This happened like within the last 24 hours. Wow, they're, rev- they're reviewing the name and considering changing it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Like, like they're they're talking about wanting to change it, but I don't know if they actually did or not. But people were proposing to to call them, uh, name them the the Red Tails. Tails. Well, I mean, not for nothing. I grew up uh, going to Cleveland Indians games with a, a mascot named Chief Wahoo. Yeah, and it's like a red faced like. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, very it's, problematic. <laughs> it's it's not only problematic, they like think that they fixed it. Like they like it was like downgraded from from, you know, from 
<laughs> absolutely horrific to very problematic yeah. as far as the image, like the, you know what I mean, the logo, like they changed some of the facial features, so his nose wasn't sort of like the as big as his forehead, but like uh, with the buck teeth and stuff. I don't know. I, I, I think I remember, I remember reading about like it, there's a high school in in Ohio, like they were called the East High, like Orientals, or something wow. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <Just like>. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it's because uh, they were East. Akron. It's in Akron. I just looked it Akron. up. Akron. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's where. Uh, that's where uh, LeBron James went to high school. Yeah, they they were called the Orientals. Um, and I think they, I think, I think they, they might have changed their name to like the dragons or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> which was just like, so, wow. Okay. I mean, uh, there, there you go. Oh, Hey, Oh, way to go. Ohio. I was born in Youngstown. Uh, Akron is the stop between Youngstown and Kent where I was sort of like where, where my, my folks lived for the first four or five years of my life where my my stepfather was he went to kent state for his undergrad and then did his uh masters at umass but uh yeah that's kind of where (laughs) that's where i'm from (laughs) it's bad news out there okay (laughs) you're up next bobby what you got uh, what else I got? Um, oh, um, so, yeah, so a little bit of a Netflix uh, anime rundown, just for kicks. A bunch of new stuff came out. The new, um, new show from the studio that brought you Kill La Kill and Gurren Lagann. Uh, you, you're familiar, I believe, Corwin. Oh, definitely with Kill La Kill. I didn't really yeah. watch much Garen Logan. Garen Logan, if you like Kill La Kill, you should watch Garen Logan. It's the thematically very similar. Uh, you talked about it before. Hello? Yeah, I think we lost Bobby. Aw, oh, damn it. Okay. Wasn't me. Yeah, I didn't kick him out. <laughs> Well, while uh, Bobby's out, uh, I'll go and jump in, I guess, thematically to our current uh, climate <laughs> situation about the world being on fire. Uh, I happen <laughs> I happen to start Watchmen, like, <laughs> like, like, like as the as the the protest, the the Black Lives well, Matter protests are starting. There he is. There he is. Sorry. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Peter. Yeah. Uh, I I was saying, Bobby, that I started watching Watchmen as the the protests were going on, <laughs> oh, wow. and I was just like, this is this is either like poorly timed or like perfect timing. <laughs> like it was. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. it, it made it even like extra heavy. And wow, that was that was a good, that was a really good show. Yeah, I rewatched. I actually rewatched Watchmen. A week or two ago, um, kind of in, I mean, you know, kind of in light of that, just to, I don't know, it's, uh, man, hell of a year so far, <laughs> guys. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, um, hell of a year, but, uh, so I was gonna say, yeah, this show came out on on Netflix. It's called BNA, uh, from the. The studio called Trigger that yeah did Gurren Lagann and and Kill a Kill. They also put out a movie last year. Um, I finally got a copy of it called Pro, Promar or Promare, which is about like a superhero firefighter team. Um, and it's this super high test like uh, pastel, like super like um, kinetic uh, animation style. Like just way over the top anime. Um, uh, that that Promare, but yeah, BNA is about 
for some reason, the, uh, the the second show to come out on Netflix this year, second anime show to come out about um, anamorphic or human humanmorphic <laughs> personified animal people, um, and so there's a little bit of like a, an interesting kind of like dynamic as it's about animal people existing in the world with humans, but they have their own city, but animal people can like pass as they can turn back to human if they need to, but they don't really always want to. And then there's this one character who she's human, but can't, but she's been turned animal. And so it's sort of like, what's the difference? There's animals that can turn human she's human but she's turned animal and has to go live with the animals and it's uh it's got some it's got some interesting uh yeah d- some dynamics this 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 studio trigger they don't they don't shy away from it put it that way um they they take their you know their uh, sort of social uh mission statement pretty seriously they always like they, they they get on their soapbox when they when they put out a, a show and it's like, um, it's just really an interesting style. Um, maybe a little too much sometimes for for some people. Like I almost think they did like the Promare movie was like a test run for this anime style because it's very pastel looking, pink, purple, but like like subdued, and then the. Um, this this BNA show, but the Promare one is just like really, really, really hyper, hyper animated and and over the top and kind of in your face, almost like if you have a little bit of epilepsy, maybe maybe skip it. <laughs> I don't know what a little bit of epilepsy is. Is this the one? Uh, I don't know. Is this the? I don't know. Like I've seen like some of my people on my feed that are anime fans are just like this show makes you want to be a furry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's well, maybe. So there's that. There's two, like I said. Or, or is that that like was, that was Beasties? Yeah, that, I think that was the one that. <laughs> Be- that Beast, people. Beast Stars or Beast Stars? I, I don't know. That one is super. Is like a, like a, what do they call it? Like maybe more slice of life anime. It's like, a, it's about like a, a predator animal that's like falling in love with a rabbit and he does he wants to eat her but he also wants to bang her so yeah it's a little bit weird i didn't actually like that one very much <laughs> okay i was just like so like what is that like zootopia fanfic or yeah something? <laughs> it is it was weird i i, I really only got to, i got to like episode two of that and i was like nope i'm good <laughs> I, I um the woman who created that is the wife of the guy that created grappler Bucky. Oh, Grappler Baki. Really? Yeah. Which was one of my favorite series back in the day. I haven't watched the new season of this one yet. So, yeah, I was going to say, the new series, uh, new season of the new version of Baki is, you realize that it's a new, it's a, it's a whole new, like, series, right? It's not like, it's like they redid it all together. No, it's continuing from the original series. Mm, I don't think so, dude. It's like there's there's an original one with like a di- very different looking kind of animation. Oh, okay. There's the original movie, the original old. Okay, okay. Yes, but then there's a TV series. It starts, starts out when he's a little little kid, and it just continues on from there. This new Netflix one literally picks up with that with that series. Left oh, on. really? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, it kind of okay. yeah. The the Netflix series is kind of. St- puts like, you in the middle of something because I, I started with that i'm like i don't know what's going on <laughs> like, right i felt the same way although i kind of like it you kind of like yeah it's it's it. not complicated it. it's not complicated yeah like he wants to be the best fighter in the world i just didn't know that i assumed that the older i figured it was something like um uh uh what's that um <laughs> the armored the the guy with the arm and the leg that's made out of metal, Full Metal Alchemist, how they did it like one Full way, and then they kind of just redid it, and it's basically the same but slightly more intense or something. Well, the second series Brotherhood for Full Metal Alchemist sticks close. Oh boy, to the here we source. go. Sticks close <laughs> to the source material, so that part there. But 
Yeah, Cor- Corwin just pushed up his, his glasses. <laughs> you, you should definitely yeah. watch the first two seasons of Grapple Blocking. There's so many inside jokes from that series that me and like Rich and some of my other friends have from watching it in college. It's it's, oh. it's great. Uh, right. Yeah. Is, is it um uh, is there a dub version? <laughs> I don't know. It is dub. I don't know where you can find it. I have like the original like bootleg DVDs from early 2000s or so. So no doubt. <laughs> All right, I'll look. I'll look it up because I didn't. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just like. Um, oh no. Yeah, I thought it was a remake. We'll, um, we'll talk. We'll talk when we're done recording. Yeah, cool. Um, I've liked what Netflix has done with it, though. I haven't watched the new one only because, in the last couple months, Netflix has put out um, some of the sh- some shows they put out just with the um, the main, you know, the original version, and then they released the dub. Once it's available, I guess some of the voice actors are, you know, they're working from home or whatever. Uh, like that happened with with the Ghost in the Shell um, series as well. They released it; it had no dub, and then about six days later, the dub showed up, and it actually didn't even show up. It was like the first four episodes got a dub, and then four more. It was kind of weird. Um, they staggered the release. Yeah. I mean, they I don't, they didn't do it intentionally. There's a, there's like a whole thing you can read it on on the Netflix page. Like, our I, I think Netflix is actually pretty closely involved with with getting um, you know these these a lot of these series made at this point. I, I know it's not like entirely that way, but like they're definitely one of the big proponents of pushing anime. Um, you know, globally at this point, besides Funimation and, uh, or rather pushing anime to the U.S. besides Funimation and what's the other one? Uh, whatever. Oh, uh, something cookie cook, something roll. Crunchy roll. Crunchy roll. <laughs> cookie roll. <laughs> uh, sounds good. You must be hungry. Yeah. yeah. I sort of know what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm actually getting to be a, a bit of an anime uh, more than I meant to become a bit of an anime expert. Not that I've, like, you know, prepared a <laughs> set of notes for this one. I should have. But, um, there's one other anime show. Oh, there's a pretty good... There's two... Oh, this is so weird that Netflix did this this year. Two Beast shows. Um the Ghost in the Shell series uh, is, I mean, they basically put put out 12 episodes. I believe we're going to get another 12 in six months or so. There's two, bo- like, like boxing sort of uh, uh, mashup or boxing hybrid shows, uh, anime is on that stuff. Megalobox Box, and um, the other one is called Lavius Le- 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 or... Lacius or something like somebody a first name um, and they both involve like basically becoming cyberized to be a boxer um, the first one the one that starts with an L Lavius I think it's called Lavius L-A-V-I-U-S I really like that one um, the kid basically you know, is in this war torn uh, country. When he was when he was younger, his parents were killed in in the war. That he was then raised as a boxer instead of like becoming a you know a street urchin. And when he saw this girl get sort of like captured by robots when he was little, and it's like haunted his memory his whole life. And then he of course encounters her uh, in his like meteoric rise. <laughs> in the boxing sphere um and then she and he doesn't know she's a girl at first because she wears a mask and she's brainwashed etc cetera, etc cetera. um i think hopefully we'll get season two of that the uh metalo megalo blocks megalo box one was a little more like it's just kind of atmospheric They're, they were going for some kind of like it's a, a bit more character driven um I feel like the the translation didn't go quite as well, but 
it's got its moments. Of the two, I think Lavius is better. But they're both decent. They're both worth watching. You know, I realize anime can make damn near anything exciting when I got into Hajime no Ipo, which is just a regular slice of life boxing anime. And they only dubbed like the first season, maybe maybe two. There's like three seasons, and maybe like the first one was dubbed, but that series is just fantastic. But <laughs> um, check that one out when you get a chance, man. It's definitely well worth it. It's not science fiction or crazy. It's yeah. just slice of life stuff, but excellent. Yeah, I, uh, we used to me like we. I think me and Alex we used to play this game, um, where we would uh, we would just take like sort of like an improv game where we just take an occupation, and then develop an anime story <laughs> yeah. around it. Right. And then and then we would sort of just kind of raise our hands whenever it started sounding cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, the like like. Boys Volleyball is like a, you know, there's like seven seasons of that anime show called Haiku or whatever, <laughs> Hayuku. Or... Yeah, exactly. You know, like, boys you, just the most scene. random like, things. <laughs> um, I started watching Initial D yesterday. Oh my I god, Initial D. I really liked it. I really liked it. I love I it. I couldn't believe it. I, I, was, I expected to hate it. I'm not really into cars started making me think about whether or not I should like get more into cars and stuff like anime will yeah w- anime. you're right anime will make anything seem fucking important <laughs> and and actually bobby that was like a my car my first car was actually a di- little slightly different model than that car it was like a <laughs> SE or something of that car oh yeah yeah you had an 86 86 old Nissan Sentra <laughs> Nice. I was say, it is it it is based on on the old Nissan street racing cars, right? The well, that, that one's like a the the eight six was a Toyota, I think. So there's the. I remember when um. I I missed I I skipped meals watching that in college. <laughs> like, there's this Toyota car that was like a kind of a street racing car, not the. It was almost like a hatchback. It's such a lame car. Um, Toyota. Yeah, it's Caprice, like a yeah. It's... Caprice. Was that it? Was that Toyota Caprice? Not a Prius. Yeah, I, I can't remember. It's like. But uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's and then, uh, like 80s car. Yeah, and then the old Honda CRX, and um, but Nis- Nissan had a few cars before they went to the. The, the three sedan, you know, regular stylings that all the car companies do now. <laughs> you should you should hear the you should listen to the soundtrack like that. Like oh, the, it's oh, it's so like it's so nineties techno. Yeah. And then they was, thro- they always throw in like these random English words and they don't make any sense and they're well, amazing. The, the thing is though the dub, the really dub version. <laughs> they completely changed the music on the dub version. Oh no, no, you know. Uh, oh, they do that rap kind of. They they change the dub. Yeah, the music is completely different on the dub. Oh man, that may be true, but it, it was very clear to me that like the the stylings of the music were were clearly part of the you know appeal. You know yeah, what I mean, like it's definitely there. It wasn't Fun, lost. It. Funny thing, uh, I can I can tell you guys the story about how Initial D <laughs> saved my life once. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. So, I like again. I was a I was a crazy fan. I had the I had the soundtrack playing in my car, right? So I, I'm driving on like a fairly busy like two two three lane road, and uh, I was probably driving a little too close to the other car in front of me, and there was like maybe like three or four cars in front of me with one car that was driving slow as hell in the left lane. And for some reason, I guess the car ended up like breaking really quick. And, and then so like the, the, the two cars in front of me both ran into that car. Right. And I swear to God, like it like like the, the, like the, the techno was going and I swear to God, like everything went slow motion. Right. (laughs) And I was able to swerve out of the way into the median, 
and the car behind me ended up hitting the car in front of me. <laughs> it was like in the Matrix when you see the cars all like starting to explode and like I swear to God, yeah, the yeah, and then like, <laughs> and then like I pulled off, and then I'm just like in the median, and I'm perfectly fine. All these other, and then this is like a four car accident. <laughs> like, <laughs> And I'm just like, thank you, Initial T. <laughs> That's awesome. I'd like to say that the soundtrack, uh, you know, boosted my 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 driving instincts. I've made <laughs> plenty of trips from Tallahassee to Orlando, rocking that soundtrack and speeding my ass yeah. off. So I'm gonna go rage my dream. <laughs> You're just like what? <laughs> <laughs> You're just like. In the- like and like, love is in danger. <laughs> like, they're just like these random, random like English words in in Japanese music. That that's so funny. Uh, I found a link to that uh, that uh, Twitter clip. You guys got to check out. Um, I'm putting it in the in the shouts. Hero FX test. Yeah, so he turns into a Jedi, turns into Ben 10, and then he turns into Spider-Man at the end. And, uh, yeah, apparently James Gunn tweeted him. One of the head Disney uh, studio guys, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. He totally killed it. <laughs> Julian Bass, or Bass, who knows. <laughs> All right, before I run out of time, go ahead, do yeah. what you got. What you got next? Who me? <laughs> um, I guess uh, I don't know. I don't really have anything that that I haven't talked about before, like like Avatar, The Last Airbender, and and I'm still going. I'm still going through uh, uh, Gargoyles, and I'm I'm actually again <laughs> more of a more of like a weird coincidence is, is uh I'm at season three where there's like the the gargoyle KKK <laughs> going on. Oh man. And uh that one's that one's weird. <laughs> You're just like okay. I'm gonna tell you, I love I love that show so much. And there's one episode that stands out in my mind because it's like something that I would do if I was in charge of a TV show. But the one episode there's in the first season or first I don't remember how many episodes. There's always this one background guy that just keeps getting his life messed up with things falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then one episode, he just calls back to him, going, remembering and calling back all these other episodes and things happening to him in the background. And I just love this. Just yeah, I just watched that one actually. That one, that one's really good. And then like he ends up just hitting him with the cream pie with that bazooka. (laughs) What is it, gargoyles? Yeah. No doubt. I gotta check that out. I, uh, I really, I remember watching Gargoyles, but I didn't like, fa- you know what I mean? I didn't faithfully see every episode or anything. Is that on Disney Plus? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah I, I broke down and, 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 um, and got Disney Plus. And at first I was just like, just to have all the Star Wars and Marvel and I'll never really check anything else out. Last night, I fell into a, into like a, Disney Plus black hole just looking at what was in it. I didn't even watch anything for like two hours. I kept clicking on something and it would be like, you know, related files. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, look at this. And be like, what is this? Is that Kurt Russell? What is this? What is this movie? The computer wore tennis shoes? What the hell is that? Bed knobs and broomsticks? Okay, like original flubber. Uh, Nice. There's crazy stuff. Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I talked about it on the show before, but... I remember you... I saw that, and I, I was trying to remember where I had heard about yep. it from. Go ahead. Can't, can't lose with that. And Viet, I... We... Well... We started uh, Avatar, and I kind of just breezed through the whole thing after the kids fell asleep, so I, I watched the whole thing in, like, three days. Yeah. So good. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, speaking of, like, ongoing characters, like the, the, the Not My Cabbages <laughs> guy is, like, an ongoing gag. In um, in Avatar, that that's always great. I I uh, I've been trying to watch a little bit of Avatar here and there because um, I've never seen it all the way through. 
I actually just watched two episodes this morning. Um, I kept starting it, and I realized I've started it like three or four times, and I would always get to the episode where they go to the village with the the girl warriors. Ah, uh, the Kyoshi the, warriors. The, yeah, they're... yeah. Where where dude has to has to. She's like, you have to do all our customs, and and um, and then I would I would always end up like forgetting about it for a while. So I why I like started there today instead of starting at episode episode one like I always do and. Uh, yeah, so now I'm at episode seven or something. It's pretty cool. Never yeah. got that far. I, I think we <laughs> yeah we covered that on the the Yip Yip live stream pretty recently. Nice, nice. Um, since we're talking about Disney Plus, uh, we watched the Artemis Fowl movie with Nikolai. It was mainly for him. Um, and it skews a little younger than I would have preferred. Yeah, that's what I figured. But it, it does have some really interesting and cool parts to it. Um, it's enjoyable. The only thing I can say is it's kind of a first part. I mean, there's an overall story arc, but it's really left with to be to be continued in some uh, ways, a lot of ways. Is this but, is that the the kids of monsters or something? There is a fantasy element. It's heavily fantasy with fairies, the, trolls. There's a, yeah, right, like fairies and trolls. Oh. I remember what I really wanted to tell you guys. To, okay, so, and and it relates to Disney Plus. You guys, I I'm sure are familiar with Willow. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a pretty epic in that it's like written by George Lucas, um, etc. Right now, you may or may not know that there is actually a three book trilogy. Uh, that comes after Willow. The books, uh, based on the story by George Lucas, are written by, drumroll, Chris Claremont. <laughs> hmm. So it's Shadow, I think it's Shadow Moon, Shadow like King, and or Shadow Warrior, and Shadow Queen, or something like that. But I actually had the first one, somebody gave it to me as a gift when I was like in you know, junior high or something. And I didn't even know what it was. I didn't know it was, it was, uh, like related to Willow. Um, somebody in my family cued into the fact that Claremont, you know, was something I was into at the time. And, uh, I started reading it based on the George Lucas, you know, connection and, and, and picked up that it was uh, (laughs) a sequel to Willow. Like, you know, four or five chapters in because it's totally like it's way darker it's pretty cool um <laughs> if you if you look it up on on wikipedia there's like a little anecdote where there's some podcast that covered it and they they basically say like 347 pages we'll never get back one of the worst books we've ever read <laughs> oh no um that's not how i remember it but you know again i was 14 so <sighs> I mean, you know, Claremont and George Lucas, how, how bad could it be? Well, I suppose it could be as bad as episode one, so. <laughs> um, I heard they were making a sequel to the movie or something. Well, there's, yeah, there's plenty of content. For Willow, so there you go. Um, what, were the, what were the, do you remember what they were called again? The yeah, Sh- Shadow Moon is the first one. Uh, and they're all, and they're all shadow, something something after that. I'm pretty shadow sure. Shadow Moon. Yeah, yeah, one of them is uh, Shadow Moon. It looks like Shadow War. Is another one. Yeah. So, yeah. you guys, you guys must have heard about uh, American Gods, the Neil Gaiman book that they made into a TV series. <laughs> the Neil Diamond book. Diamond. Diamond. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Gaiman. Yes. No. No. I'm sorry. I was, <laughs> I was thinking Sweet Caroline. Yes. But, um, yeah. It's, his, his I main, like the show. I like the show. His main his main character is named Shadow Moon. That's right. That's right. Which I finally watched the second season. I'm way late, and that show is still fantastic. Yeah. But it's um, I'm not going to use up my turn talking about that. I am going to use up my turn talking about this show called movie called Becky. Bobby, 
you know anything about this movie before I get into it? It's called Becky. It is called Becky. No. Okay. No. Wait. It sounds. For, go ahead. It sounds familiar, but I don't think so. Um, Kevin James is the main bad guy in it, and <laughs> uh, the little girl is Lulu Wilson. It's it's Home Alone meets The Punisher. <laughs> what? That's the best way I can put it. <laughs> it's Home Alone meets The Punisher. Okay. So, basically, these neo-Nazis break out of prison, and they go to this, uh... What? Uh, it's not a beach house. What do you call it? Just a cabin. Like a cabin, uh, cabin in the woods. Okay. To go find something, and Becky's family is there. And it just takes a turn for the worse for her family. But she, uh... She put some punishment down in some serious ways. <laughs> and it is just so crazy... I mean, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, it is great. It is, I mean, I've been actually, I've been talking about this movie for a while after I watched it because it's definitely something you have got to watch. All right, I'm basically, you know, I'm on I'm on the internet right now trying to find it. So, <laughs> oh, it is it's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Becky. Who? <sighs> Where are we at? We got time? Uh, got a little bit of time. Well, uh, that's pretty much all the news that's fit for me to print. I don't know what if I don't know if I got anything else. You got anything else? Uh, let's see. I we've had it in the the show notes for a while. Uh, I guess Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. Oh yeah, we did talk about it last episode, did we? Yeah, we never talked about it. So uh, yeah, that was really good. Uh, if you if you like the, it's it's got the same. It's a movie. Animated movie. Yeah, animated movie. Okay. And it, it's got the it's got the animation and like the like the X ray the X ray violence of like the the most recent Mortal Kombat editions. Where like uh-huh. you know, like they, they kinda X ray on like the broken bones and stuff like that. <laughs> so if you're a fan of the if you're a fan of the um, the the game at all, then it's definitely worth it. Mm. Uh good animation, uh you know, it, it. I guess like the the plot can be a little corny at times, but it's uh, still still good. Like uh, good animation, good uh, fight choreography. Yes, and uh, definitely worth a watch. I, I, I walked by that. I walked by it in Target uh, last night or the day before, and I just assumed it was a game. Although I suppose I should have known because it was right next to. Titan Season 2, which was a good reminder for me to try and finish Titan Season 2, because I don't think I did. Um, taking a step back, going back real quick. Viet, you finished Watchmen, right? Yes. Okay, oh. Bobby, you finished it as well, right? Yes. Okay, because that twist got me. I mean... Uh, Do- Dr. Manhattan been the Dr. Manhattan? Time. Yeah, that was yeah. the twist. I'll give him that. Yeah, I mean, if you want to wrap it up here on just to, just to, to kind of vamp on Watchmen for a minute, like, honestly, I mean, and at the time, I think Mandalorian and Watchmen were going more or less, like, in succession or, like, right after each other. Like, that was some good, that was, like, appointment TV that, like, I hadn't had for, for a while. Um, uh, but, but, you know, that... What doing that Watchmen thing? It was kind of like really theirs to lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like taking that on was kind of like, all right, this is gonna be a shit show. Um, and they fucking nailed it. You know what I mean? Like they they really really killed it. They took the property in a direction that it didn't feel at all like they were like um, you know patronizing the original material. And they totally built something like important out of you know what I mean out of out of uh, what already existed before that was already so important you know for different reasons. Um, I was really impressed with how that came together. Um, yeah, every angle. I mean, like <laughs> from the from the the sort of like from the end of the first episode where like the lights 
you know, come up on the, <laughs> you know, the sheriff uh, in the tree, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is going to be fucked up. <laughs> yeah, the, um, what's it called? The, I think the, my favorite episode on that was the, was the black and white, like the flashback episode. Oh, whoa. And, and what they built out of that, out of having, um, yeah, the, uh, I forget that hero's name. Um, Hooded Justice, I think. Hooded Justice, but him, who is, you know, who is referenced, who's already referential in the original Watchmen material, right? Because he's like, he's the original hero, and then we get to find out he's black and gay. <laughs> That was uh, that was just kind of like some uh, um, fuck you white folks. <laughs> you know, and it makes me wonder if, in, a, in the best possible way. It makes me wonder if Alan Moore put that some of that in there with his race in the original because it's been such a long time since I've read it. I don't think so, but no, it's def- it definitely was a that was a uh, bombshell. So one last thing I want to just touch on before we go, because, you know, my son is I'm, I'm making my son become a movie art tour. I mean, he's seen all, right. all the good stuff I can recommend. And from the one recently, the Jet Li movie to a movie that I didn't realize was going to hold up so well is the uh, the old horror relic, the relic movie. Yeah, you know, uh, that? The rel- is that like Michael Madsen and like. It's like a bug or something. I don't know. Maybe? Uh, it's not Michael Madsen, but it's um, it basically takes place mostly in a museum. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was thinking of. It and it's up. like, really? It holds up. It, it okay. Holds up. It's still a very damn good movie, and I was surprised. I heard it. I was like, it, it, it kind of looks like a rancor. <laughs> 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 from, from like a crop picture. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, it's Tom Sizemore was the main character. That's, that was, yeah, 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 yeah. One of those guys from, uh, you know, from Tarantino's stable. I was surprised. Holds up. 1997 movie, The Relic. If you guys have never seen it, science fiction mystery at its best. Definitely watch it. Mira Sorvino, right? Sure. Check it out. Uh, it holds up. I was surprised. Interesting. Beginning of CGI too, and they did some pretty good practical effects with it. CGI was cool, but yeah. Dang, we didn't talk. Right. We talked about one comic. What? What? Uh. What <laughs> Tuskegee Airs from? What's that? Uh, what? Uh, it's published. indie published. It is indie published. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's there. Um. Yeah, it's kind of the point, right? <laughs> True, but Bobby, I was going to ask you if you if you've read that uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal yet. Ooh, I haven't. But th- that doesn't have anything to do with um, the Robin who laughs or or whatever they're calling him, right? Like, have you guys seen that image that that got released? Like, yes, he's coming in the third third issue of the series. This first oh. issue came out. He's coming around the third, but um, it, it's continuing Scott Snyder. Is, is it written by Snyder? It is, and Greg Capullo on art. Okay. So the original All right. team is back, and it's insane, insane fun. Okay. So definitely look at it and check it out. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I will do. And I will say no more. Maybe once we get further on in the story, we'll actually make it an official part yeah. of the episode where we can talk about it, but... <laughs> It's ridiculous out there okay. that only Scott Snyder can come up with. So, must be black label, right? Like, no, it's main DC event. Really, like, middle of the DC universe. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, good for them. All right, All right. Uh, are we ready to uh, to call yeah. it? Let's call it. Uh, once again, thank you listeners for joining us. Um, of course, we have the Patreon listeners do get first dabs, first 
first touch on these episodes a month early, followed by everybody else. Um, give us some feedback. If there's anything you guys want us to talk about or check out, uh, we can try to squeeze it in. Just hit us up. Uh, EMP at Earth's Mightiest Podcast. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at EMPcast. Viet, they can find you at? At Comedian Viet. Bobby, they can find you at? At Bobby Mo Better. And definitely don't forget to jump on our Facebook page and come hang out with us. Come talk to us. Facebook group dot, dot Earth's Mightiest Podcast dot com. Yeah, yeah. Peace out, boys. Indeed. See you next month.